Under normal circumstances, I'm using my Trend Air Shield Pro to keep my face safe and to not breathe in all this dust. While doing this video for you and having to talk through some of it, instead I'm wearing this N95 with the vent on it. I picked these up before COVID, so I'm lucky enough to still have a few left over to wear while doing this. I don't want all that dust in my lungs. I chose to make a cheap and easy indexing jig. The, the plate I have on there is 120. I have 96, 48, 72, and 60. Naturally, I started with the 48 when I was first playing around. It was easiest to deal with. I have this high-tech block of 2x4 with a nail and some hot glue. It fits into the hole to hold the, everything in place. I use my little pedestal here which is dead on center and I can drag that right across the plate. Now if I happen to have a vessel or some such other thing that's not a plate, I have this. I generally clamp it down on the back side, on the back side of the lathe ways and it'll allow me to go right alongside the vessel or vase or whatever I may have here. Now how do I get to the next hole? I draw the line, I slide this out, I move it to the next hole, draw a line, pull this out, move it to the next hole, draw a line and on around 120 times. As, this, as you watch this video, you'll see I only use just a few tools to make do this whole turn. Obviously my chuck and a calipers. I have a digital calipers. This is a dial calipers, but to be honest, I'm never really looking at the numbers anyways. I'm using this to get the size of the recess I want in the plate. I have an eighth inch parting tool here and I use this to create the recesses. Most of the turning is done with my trusty half inch bowl gouge. And then of course the beading is done with D-Way 1 8 inch bead tool. I also have a 3 16 here and I've seen a lot of people who start the outside bead with this wider one bead. And I've done that before, but I've got now to the point where everything happens with this 1 8 inch beading tool. So let's talk about where and how to do the burning. My current burning station is here in the living room. It's a really good spot during the daylight. Not so good once it starts getting dark as my lighting is not as good as it should be. It's a great spot because I can hang out with my wife. We can watch TV or whatever while I'm burning. Even better, she doesn't mind. I used to have a cheap 20 something dollar from Hobby Lobby or home or wherever it came from. And that thing was terrible. So once I got going on this, I knew I needed a decent burner. I have this single razor tip burner. It really works well. I'm very happy. The dual might be nice, but so far it hasn't been a problem for me. The tips that I use are a 1.5 millimeter 
ball tip that looks like this. If you can see that. And that is really just for putting my signature in the year on. And the tip that does all the burning and I get all those lines from the center in or the center out is this heavy duty medium spear. Again, there's many ways to do this. This way works well for me and I'm able to get this done and the cost was not gigantically terrible.